Seeing no further introductions, it's time for member statements. The member from yes, Lambton, Kent, Middlesex. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. On June 9th and 10th, Four Counties Hospital in my hometown of Newbury will celebrate its 50th anniversary. Four Counties Hospital was a dream of my grandfather and a community of supporters and stands at the intersection of the counties of Middlesex, Lambton, Kent and Elgin, serving a catchment area of 23,000 residents. Crucially, the hospital is the closest emergency health care facility to Highway 401 in the long stretch between London and Chatham. Four Counties Health Services offers extensive outpatient care, 24-hour access to a physician for emergencies, minor surgical services, and a number of continuing care beds. Additionally, Four Counties has an active and successful adult daycare centre, and the facility supports numerous community programs such as Meals on Wheels and BON's Palliative Care Volunteer Program. In 1967, Four Counties was started through the efforts of my grandfather, among others. With Newbury at the centre of an extensive farming tract and in, in an area that boasted several local industries, Jack McNaughton, Reeve of Newbury, and his council recognized the need to have a local hospital. Their efforts were strongly supported by Matthew Diamond, Minister of Health under the Honourable John Robarts. Four Counties Health Services is now a part of the Middlesex Hospital Alliance and continues to play a vital role in our community. The anniversary celebration itself will include hospital tours, a time capsule ceremony, first responders demonstrations, a staff and volunteer reunion, a vintage car show and a children's fun fair. A good time will be held by all. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Welland. Uh, thank you, Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise today to congratulate the Club Richelieu in my Welland riding on celebrating their 60th anniversary this year. The Club Richelieu provides invaluable space and programming for our Francophone community. They also help raise money, upwards of 40000 annually, for local groups, including the long term care facility, the Foyer Richelieu, uh, to, while helping preserve the Francophone uh, culture. On February 7, 1957, a group of 40 people came together to respond respond to the fast-growing francophone population in Welland. They reached out to friends, family, community, outlined goals, and before you knew it, the Club Richelieu was born. Uh, Armand Gervais and Lionel Beauperlant are the only two surviving members today. Their very first contribution was $1,000 to the Welland Hospital, and while it may not mean much now, at the time it was a significant amount of money. The club is now the largest Club Richelieu chapter in the world or among the largest, and I'm so proud to support the work that they do each and every day. So to Armand, uh, Mike Sigan, Lionel, and many other members and their partners behind the scenes who have contributed to the success, congratulations on 60 years. Felicitations. Felicitations. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. Statements. Further members' statements, the Chief Government Whip. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Saturday, May 6, along with over 300 community leaders, educators, and well-wishers, I had the privilege of attending the 50th anniversary gala of Niagara College of Applied Arts and Technology at the beautiful Niagara-on-the-Lake campus. Over the past half century, Niagara College has had a profound, positive impact on the Niagara region and indeed our province and country. The college's highly qualified and dedicated faculty has been an excellent resource for our entire community, and in particular, those who have attended the college as a student. Industry, business, and labor have all appreciated the outstanding cooperation that has been forthcoming from the college as it prepares its students for the workplace. Both those who are entering post-secondary education for the first time and those taking advantage of meeting additional educational requirements and obtaining training for a new vocation have benefited from these experiences at this renowned educational institution. Student satisfaction surveys and success of its students in securing employment positions are evidence of the significant role that Niagara College has played in the lives of its students, both while they are attending Niagara and in their lives after college. Under the dynamic leadership of Dr. Dan Patterson, Niagara College continues to lead the way in so many areas of post-secondary education, and for this, 
all of us in Niagara are deeply grateful. Thank you. For the member of Famous, the member from Whitby, Oshawa. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise to recognize the work of the Blue Umbrella Program in Whitby, created by the Elhammer Society of Durham Region and partnership with the Town of Whitby Community Development Fund. Speaker, there are approximately 10,000 people living with dementia in Durham Region, and the Blue Umbrella Program aims to provide local businesses and organizations in the region with education about dementia and strategies to provide good customer service to people living with dementia. Speaker, once uh, all employees are trained and the business is certified, they can wear blue umbrella pins and have window decals, and a resident with dementia will be aware there's help there for them. Learning how to interact with residents who may have forms of dementia is very important, Speaker, and the Alzheimer's Society of Durham Region, with the assistance of the town of Whitby, is assisting with that process. Speaker, it's my pleasure to highlight the Blue Umbrella Program launched by the Alzheimer's Society of Durham Region and to encourage all businesses and organizations to reach out to better the lives of those living in Durham Region with dementia who would otherwise not have this level of help to support them and their families. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements from the for Windsor to come see. Speaker, let me tell you about Ontario's world champion team of paramedics. They're from Windsor and Essex County. Last year, they traveled to the Czech Republic. It was their first international competition. The Rally Revis brings together paramedic teams from 30 countries. They take part in a 24-hour competition that starts at 6 in the morning. 24 straight hours, Speaker, the teams are thrown into a dozen life and death situations. They are judged on how well they assess their circumstances, come up with a rescue plan, and provide the medical treatment. It's a grueling competition. Team Ontario came away with the gold medal last year, and they'll soon be on the way to defend their championship. The competition will run between the 25th and the 28th of May. Once again, the team captain is Chris Kerwin from my riding of Windsor Tecumseh. He's joined by Lance Hoover from last year's team and two newcomers, Sean May and Mike Filio. They're members of CUPE, the Canadian Union of Public Employees. The other Canadian team is from British Columbia, and they finished second last year. Speaker, I don't know about you, but for me, having the top two teams from Canada says a lot about the quality of our paramedic training here in Canada. It also says a great deal about Ontario's professional paramedics. You can follow their trip on Facebook and Twitter at EMS Team Ontario or on their website at one word, emsteamontario.com. Guys, have a great trip, and if you can, bring home the gold. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Northumberland, Quinty West. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, last week I had the privilege of attending two volunteer services award ceremonies that recognized the hard work and commitment of dedicated volunteers in my community. I attended in Coburg and in Belleville. I was thrilled to be able to personally thank each one of the recognized individuals and bring in greetings from the Minister of Citizenship and the Premier of Ontario. I was so pleased to be able to honour over 170 volunteers for their service contribution to Northumberland Quinty West communities in various organizations. From the Beaudley Legion to the Rosenit Agricultural Society to the Girl Guides of Belleville, and from the Highland Shores Children Aid Society to Community Care Strand Hills. Speaker, over 2,775 years of service has been invested by these selfless individuals to make their community a better place to live. I was moved by the many stories through the evening of the appreciation and happiness they, their action through the organization they serve. I was reminded of a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, Jr. Speaker. Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a, a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You all need a heart full, a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. Speaker, again, I want to take the opportunity to thank all the volunteers, and I, as I often say, why would our communities be without volunteers? Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this weekend, a Dufferin County Treasurer, Dorothy Jan Dan 
Dorothy Jane Needles passed away after a life well lived. Dorothy Jane, or DJ, lived her life with a passion for music, the arts, her family, and her community. At the age of five, she had already written her first play and was an assistant director for her mother, who ran the Toronto Children's Players. At the age of 16, DJ had received her teacher certificate and was teaching at the Crescent Preparatory School for Boys. She married William, or Bill Needles, in 1946, and a few years later began hosting Kindergarten of the Air on CBC Radio. By the mid-1950s, DJ and Bill had purchased their farm in Mono. In the 1970s, while working for the Etobicoke Board of Education, the Needles family moved to Rosemont and lived in the Penny Farthling Antique Shop and founded another Rosemont landmark, the Globe Restaurant. DJ worked as a dispatcher for the Rosemont Volunteer Fire Department and continued to give back to her community as a church organist, as a volunteer at the Dufferin County Museum, giving music lessons and running a cultural program out of the Orange Hall. She even nurtured a heritage garden at the Mono Municipal Offices. In 2009, she was awarded the Lieutenant Governor's Ontario Heritage Award for commitment to her community. The, need the Needles passed on their passion for the arts and public service to her son, Dan Needles, a celebrated author and playwright, and her daughter, Laura Ryan, the current mayor of Mono and previous warden of Dufferin. While we mourn her passing, Dorothy Jane Needles' enormous contribution to Dufferin is a legacy that will continue to enrich our community for years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Further members, statement the member from Durham. Speaker, I am pleased to rise in the legislature to recognize that May 8 to 14 is nursing, nursing Week in Ontario. Yay, nurses. This is an opportunity to congratulate and thank the dedicated nurses and nurse practitioners in my riding of Durham, Hard workers. as well as our, our, our whole province who continue to provide quality care for their patients, families, and friends. Nurses work tirelessly to make our lives healthy and happier. They play a vital role in the delivery of high-quality health care in Ontario. Vital. As the father of a nurse, I know firsthand the hard work, long hours, love and compassion required to do, to do their job, and I sincerely thank you for, the, for your efforts uh, for their efforts. I would friends. also like to encourage my colleagues to participate in the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario Take care. 17th annual Take Care your MP, Take Your MP to Work event. This I'm event gone. provides a unique opportunity for MPPs to go to work with, with a registered nurse to see the skills and expertise required to provide quality health care to Ontarians. Tomorrow, I will be visiting Ontario Shores for Mental Health Sciences, in which wow. I am looking forward to meeting with registered nurses, nurse, nurse practitioners, and students within the Durham region to engage in meaningful discussions. Thank you once again for, to all the nurses in Ontario for all you do. Thank you, Speaker. Lovely. Thank you. The member, states, the member from Scarborough Rouge River. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise today as the first MPP of a Korean heritage in Ontario to speak about Asian Heritage Month. May of each year, Asian Heritage Month is a time to reflect on the many achievements and contributions of Asians in Ontario who have helped to shape our great province that we are today. On the key strengths in the fabric of Ontario's multicultural mosaic is, of course, the many Asian communities. Their dynamics, dynamism, work ethics, entrepreneurship, and the beautiful culture help make part of Ontario's beautiful cultural mosaic. Today, we see Asian Ontarians are very active in their communities and are successful in various fields. As an MPP of Asian origin, I'm especially proud of the integral role that Asian Ontarians have played in enriching our province economically, culturally, and socially. I invite all Ontarians to learn more about the important role played by the Ontarians of Asian heritage and to take part in the many events taking place this month. Mr. Speaker, I hope all members will join me celebrating Asian Heritage Month, honoring our Asian communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's